All right, welcome back everyone to the Insomnia True Server Championship with Lothar and myself. We'll be going onwards to the grand finals of this open qualifier. So again, this is uh, for one spot, you know, all accommodations paid for the event at Birmingham that's going to be happening in December. Uh, there's going to be a LAN qualifier and a UK only online qualifier, but that'll come a bit later. For tonight though, we're down to two players, Cursed versus Leon. Um, we saw Cursed earlier take it extremely quickly. With a crazy yeah. double win with Shaman, the only player that we've seen bring the class so far. That's very true, and uh, I would love to see the Shaman again, like free owing his opponent. I would love to see that. That's something I would actually tweet about because <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> and uh, uh, other option uh, is the, that the uh, Leon just free owes his opponent with Patron again. It might happen. I mean, we saw Leon do the exact same thing uh, last last match. He actually went against Noctis and 3-0'd him. If you weren't there to see, it was actually pretty brutal. Uh, the win he got against Control Warrior was absolutely beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. It's not something you see every day. Patron taking a win with Grom Hellscream as a win condition late game in Lotheb. Uh, against Control, it's one of the worst matchups. But it's nice to see once in a while that Control Warrior can lose the matchup. I think it's lopsided, but it's not, you know, freeze mage level, yeah. right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. But um, anyway, let's like let's see what will be the opener for both players. I, I guess that we didn't see a lot from Kirst. Like we didn't see the warrior, right? We did see the Dru no wait. Do we see the warrior? We saw from Kirst. I think we saw we saw everything. I think from Kirst. Leon. Um, oh, you're right. I think we saw his shaman and his druid. We didn't see the warrior, I guess. No, I don't think we saw the Warriors, so there's a possibility that it is control, which would give him an edge against uh, Leon's deck. And one thing to say as well is that uh, the Shaman, I think, from Cursed, will do very well against the Paladin and against the Druid from Leon. I think mm -hmm. these, like the Shaman against Druid will be very simple. The Patron matchup will also be very possibly lopsided. Um, Feral Spirit, even though it looks like a card that you shouldn't want to play uh, against a Warrior, in this case is very problematic because now you can curve the Trog into the Totem Golem, which is very hard to remove, into the Feral Spirit, like everything kind of works together. Having the coin for the cursed, um, you know, Shaman opener would be absolutely crazy. So Yeah, but he has, to get, he has to get that Trog into him one. And by the way, um, as you said, the winner gets, the winner of the today's qualifier gets the flight to the UK, accommodation for the event and entry into the $30,000 uh, Insomnia True Silver Championships uh, in Birmingham. And all of that is paid by the sponsor, which is game.co.uk. So be sure to visit that website uh, because it's awesome what they are doing for our scene, for our Harson scene. And uh, other not notable thing to mention is the fact that being just being there at the mine event, um, you have guaranteed a prize money right now. Right. So whoever gets here to the top of the, you know, whoever gets the win between these two players will get some guaranteed prize money. Uh, the, the amounts are not disclosed just yet. They're going to be figured out a bit later down the line. But that means that whoever wins this gets their potential first tournament winnings, right? I don't know if they've ever gotten those, but getting your first eSports money is usually kind of a milestone in any pro player's Oh you know, yeah, career. If they're trying to make it, it's just that one tournament you remember fondly as the one where you actually got paid, and that's yeah. really a big deal. Uh, we'll see how it ends up panning out. I think both players here deserve it. Cursed bringing the shaman here. I I wonder how much practice he's put in the deck because the cards he's using are very recent, um, and as a result of that, either he's pioneering the aggro shaman. Or he's mm -hmm. been playing around with it so much that he knows it's just a great deck and people will start net decking. That's what I want to see. I want to see this aggro shaman list <laughs> everywhere. Because right now shaman is sorely lacking for representation. Um, All he had is representation when it was the aggressive mech shaman, right? This might be the right. second iteration of the mech shaman. Let's say like so. Uh, it's basically, yeah, it, think, shares uh, the, it shares the, uh, the, the basic idea of the deck, but it doesn't just require mechs at all yeah they're not doing the exact it's not the same cards right so you're maybe dodging all the you know the mech synergy necessary um we didn't see power mace at all either which i mm -hmm. want to say is something that you tend to find in every shaman list even in mid-range where they run only shredders as mechs mm -hmm. they still like to include the the power mace because it's a good control tool it's an eagle horn bow uh and you would use eagle horn bow probably in some cases 
even if you didn't necessarily always get the traps. You know, sometimes you use Eagle Hornbow without getting the extra charges, and it's all right. So this is kind of why um, Power Mace is used, and we didn't see any of that in Curse deck. And I'm wondering whether or not mm -hmm. it's even there with Doomhammer. Yep. Yep, those are valid questions, and I uh, hope we'll get answered that uh, after the meta. I would love to see the deck list. Like the whole deck list. Yeah, I'll have to ask him. Um, but I'm pretty sure I've got something pretty much identical. As I told you, you know, I've, we've been working on aggro shaman for a while. You know, the not mm -hmm, the mech mm -hmm. type, but the yeah, pure yeah. aggro Ebola. Uh, and this is the type of deck that I've been trying to make work. And I feel nowadays it looks a lot like what we saw from Cursed. Maybe his list is more refined, or maybe it's missing something. But I'd love to take a look at it to see what he changed. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the Trog, from my perspective, like I tried to make a Midran Shaman with the Trog and it doesn't really work. It doesn't really no, work I, because I... the overload is just killing your curve and you can't allow that. So having it in an aggro deck, in a typical aggro, like super, super, super aggro, super tempo, uh, I'm, I mean, not super tempo, just super fast aggro deck, it makes sense to have the Trog in there. Yeah, I mean, the, the big thing with Trog, and that's something that I think we need to talk about a bit if we want to talk about mid-range is, you know that time where you top decked Zombie Chow mid-game and you wondered why it was in your deck? Oh, the yeah. Trog is pretty much the same way if you're playing mid-range. Uh, if you're playing aggro, it's just an additional way to get that early curve going. And it's mm -hmm. one that's going to snowball. Uh, whereas in mid-range, it very often feels like a Zombie Chow. And honestly, in mid-range, you might as well play Zombie Chow. Maybe I'm wrong on that front. Um, but I feel like very often they will, you know, you can play Trog instead of Dumbie Chow and you'll probably do just as well, if not equally, uh, if not possibly a bit better. But they seem to have the same weakness because Shaman still doesn't draw cards and the Trog doesn't address that. The Trog doesn't give you card advantage. It just compensates one of the aspects that's bad about Shaman. Just mm -hmm. one. Yep. Yep. Cool. So. I agree with you. Tough to justify, and we will see the Shaman opener from Curse on the Tunnel Trog, and like, oh god, everybody run away. <laughs> that hand is absolutely <laughs> disgusting. Oh wow. I'm actually really scared right now, because if there's no War Axe, that's a coin Feral Spirit from Cursed. Which is basically a better mirror image. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome your new Burst Shaman Overlords. Because they're curving, and they're coming for you, and they're and also getting... And next is Abusive Surgeon. Right, why not? You know, why not? Oh my god. This is like the dream opener, right? It doesn't get better, because you also un-overload yourself on 4, and you have access to a knife juggler that you can play with either Totem or Lepronome. And I'm sure if you find a spell, you can always weave it in later. That is devastating. There is no other way to put it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Devastating, and he gets a kill with the abusive on that armor smith before it even stacks any armor. Uh, I guess there might be a re uh, there might be a possibility to play the Lepernome right now instead of trading. I mean, you trade with with double attacks from the the walls from instead? the walls, sure, right? Because that that makes almost no difference when it comes to uh, to the health. They die from the. Um, they only died a slam, I guess. Yes, they, they only died a slam, right but now. then your opponent They're doesn't draw. Executes, right? What if they use ex? Okay, it makes sense because executes have not other targets in this deck, so it actually makes sense to not damage both. Okay. Right, you're feeding him kind of uh, execute value. Uh, in this case, though, we can see that Cursed is going to be able to deal with this uh, Corsair somewhat effectively. It's not really going to be too much of an issue for him. Uh, he's able to use his juggler for a 50 50 if he wants could always trade that uh, that trog although i doubt that's viable <laughs> yeah trading the trog i mean you want to get rid of the abusive right that's the big thing because it's going to die to the death bite aoe just get it out get it out of there it's not something you want to keep mm -hmm. i think the 50 50 on juggler totem looks good and if it doesn't work then what I do you do? I guess you're out of luck. I guess if you get the spell damage, you can always use Lava Shot. Hmm. What about? So, hmm. That's really tricky. It's actually got pretty bad. You could go Wolf Rider, Leopardome, and Punch Face for seven. 
I think the lava burst might be okay. Yeah, because you're also unoverloading yourself on five with lava shock into juggler leper, right? Yes, oh, and it makes sense for the trog because basically that adds plus plus two attack, so it makes sense. But he goes for the fifty fifty. That's a very risky play. Uh, if I'm gonna, oh, yeah, if I'm gonna go fifty fifty, I think I wouldn't. I, I might start. Yeah, yeah, he gets it. Oh my, oh my god. god! That's huge. That's actually really huge. And now Leon's is, like, he's faced with a really tough decision. Do I do I get patrons or do I kill his stuff? Because if I don't kill his stuff, maybe I die. Well, he's gonna be taking at least six from these two guys on the board right now, and he's gonna be go down to guaranteed ten, which means for a shaman who's playing burst, that's basically nothing. That's essentially yep. nothing. Yeah, that that's basically oh just he lava burst face, wait, wait, lava wait. shock. You want off lethal, five? right? That's four. Lava shock is five damage, right? Lava, like, lava burst, burst five damage. He's got, he's got seven, he's got nine, he's got one, he's one off lethal. He is one off lethal. With another lava shock and a wolf rider on the back end. You have to take this. You yep. have to take this. Goodness gracious. This deck from Cursed is packing in some serious work. But what if it And does that's the worst off. matchup out of the way. That's the worst so. matchup out of the way. Amazing. Armor Smith, the Armor Smith one? and Bust. Like you have to get Armor Smith and Whirlwind out of this. Oh yeah, that will be the only possibility. And that's not it. That's game. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't know, know it yet. yet. Yeah, but he has to. He has to at least play it out. He's got the execute. He can trade away a patron. So he's still in this, from his perspective. He thinks maybe, just maybe. There is no Doom Hammer, Lava Burst, Lightning Bolt, Crackle, nothing. Just maybe. Maybe. Actually, I don't think there's a combination of three cards that don't kill you. Like, even Rock <laughs> Fighter. Like, I can't think of a combination of three cards that doesn't kill you here. Wait, what card here doesn't deal instant damage? Knife Juggler and. Leper Gnomes. Oh, look at that. That's the Warlock Crackle for zero mana. I told you, they're coming back. Coming for your decks. Warlock's actually getting everything. All right, well, Curse will go ahead and pick up the first win in this series, uh, which means Leon's going to have to switch to Paladin or Druid, both of which I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to have fight off against the Shaman. Definitely not. I mean, if if Curse will start with a Trog every single game, this might be very fast finals. I, so, um, I can't remember what was the uh, context, but I remember talking with Firebat and he said literally, well, if you play a Temple Mage and uh, you get uh, the Mana Vermin to one, you win. I'm like, mm, okay. Yeah, Firebat's That's quite very a simple. It's yeah, quite he simple, simplifies it a lot. Yeah, but, right. but, but, but it feels like the Mana Vermin is very powerful and the Trog. I mean, honestly, though, like we were talking about this before the game. Um, we said if he gets the trog into coin pharaoh spirit that's impossible to recover from and that's exactly the cards that were played in that exact order ah, i feel like i'm getting a visual glitch here all right the screen getting technical issues here from skype actually buffing out it's buffering, not really showing me anything. That would probably be. Oh wait, I'm back. Best course of action. I cannot see the screen right now. Um,
Oh, that was some fun stuff. Yeah, Skype decided that we wouldn't get to see the second game's beginning in the finals, and I'm actually disappointed because I wanted to see what the Shaman would open with. At least we'll get a nice surprise, see uh, whether or not his uh, aggro bomb got defused, because we saw the cog hammer in the Paladin's hand, and I think in this matchup it might actually be something of um, a blessing, right? Yeah, yeah. And based on this, it looks like the cog hammer did a lot of work. This board's not looking nearly as threatening as it did last game. Oh yeah, it doesn't. Shaman. It's like two HP. What? Yeah, it's not two HP good at all. lost from the paladin. That's not enough. That's yeah, like a leper gnome died. That's about all you did. Ah, speaking of the devil. Um, oh, although there's... one thing to say though is Curse does have a lot of face damage, so he like he doesn't want to tank those leper gnomes. If he attacks them with his face, he won't be very happy, but he has to, and that's putting his uh, shredder if he attacks into earth shock range. Yeah, I think at this point, Curse is simply going to push. Does Curse even make a trade here? I don't think so. I don't think Curse can afford to use his uh, Lepronome as a trading tool. No, 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 no. I don't think so. It just... There's not a single universe in which he can. Oh, God. Even less now. Goodness. Okay, this is the, the type of hands that I saw every single time from RDU during ATRC. Yeah, well, that's that's what Shaman Aggro does, right? Yeah, he, it, you, you draw all just... the spells and like, oh, God. I mean, you know what? Oh. I think that the Aggro Shaman, what he needs, is more quality Aggro minions from, for, for his class, which like charge, you know? Of course. That will um, uh, be played instead of the spells. And then The idea fine. was to give... Uh, one of the ideas that I brought up a while back was to give Shaman a card that basically was... Like, a, imagine a wolf rider that got attacked based on your overload mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, for two mana. It was like a bluegill warrior that got attacked based on your overload. So the idea is that you would unload all your crappy spells and then play this guy as an added tool. And worst case scenario, it's a bluegill. You know, so it's it's just a very aggressive card. Uh, think of it as a druid of the saber for shaman. Yeah, makes sense. Oh god, that's a terrible draw. Doomhammer makes it better, but you still have to find the Doomhammer, and good luck with that. I wonder if he plays yeah. 2 or 1. I like 2 in Agro Shaman. I find it really difficult to run just 1. Even though sometimes you end up with 2 of them, it's so important against Control Warrior. Um, and it's so important overall, right? It, Ma Mage is the only matchup against which it gets bad. But it's literally the only one. Yeah, Leon looks like he's got this... Uh, Mapped out. Ah, Doom oh, that's Hammer a good top part. deck would do another, another bit of work here. Pick this guy up with the Doom Hammer. And you're that's good to go. 15 damage available with Doom Hammer, but there's no Doom Hammer. There's Trog, which doesn't necessarily make up in this situation. Hmm. Yeah, but you have to go for it. Face. But you oh, know there's Noble the Sacrifice, part. right? You have to assume that's the case. You have to trigger it at some point. So without Doom Hammer, there's no way you're getting a good deal out of it. And now with the Consecration, Leon's looking at this and he's like, Yep, looks like I'm clearing this board up very easily. Getting away with a very easy win. Alright, so the series That's will be equalized. And we won't get a crazy sweep from Cursed Shaman. As much as I would have loved to see this, it's not happening. Yeah, but at least he got one win with it. So that's fine. And before Alec here. Hmm. How good would Alec here be here? It wouldn't really do that much, would it? I mean, it's just too expensive. It doesn't feel like it, it's a part of this deck. It, it it doesn't even have to be a part of this deck. That's my uh, that's my opinion. Yeah, I think you're right. Rockbiter on the Doctor Boom. Nope, doesn't even you commit Sudoku. He's just going to give the game to. Kind of what we expect from uh, Agro Shaman. More often than not, it feels inconsistent like this. I have to wonder though, you know, we saw the Trog openers. Those were pretty crazy. We saw three of them today. Um, yeah. How can... Because the thing is, when you hard mulligan for a card, you find it about... On the coin, about 50% of the time or so. Uh, uh, isn't it more? Everything. Oh, no, no, 55 it, it, it's or okay. something. It's 50-ish or something around those lines. As a first player, I think you see it a bit under 50 so you would have a crazy opener 
about 50% of the time. And I mean not a good one, a crazy one. Because anything else you pick up is likely going to work. Now we're going to see the control warrior from Cursed. I mean the patient warrior, sorry, from Cursed against the secret pally. That's a usually good matchup for the warrior. We'll see if he's going to be able to pull it off or fall down to the divine shields. Uh, well, control. Uh, sorry, uh, wait. That's control or patron warrior? Because it that's has patron cursor. from cursed. Yeah, you sure. Well, this it is has uh, Alexstrasza. Yeah, sure. That's the uh, Alexstrasza Grom that you can add in that deck. It, it, it's like a hybrid. I'm not sure if he's playing the control variant. All I know is that from what I've seen, the the patient can include Alexstrasza Grom Doctor Boom now. And you can go back to some shield block for cycling if you think aggro is going to be around. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Um, like oh OTK. no! You know what would be hilarious? The OTK warrior with, with um, Brand Bronze Beard, Blood Cell Raider, and Charge. So you go. This is how it goes. Equip Gorhal. Next turn you go. Blood Cell Raider, like Brand Bronze Beard, Blood Cell Raider. So it's got 18 attack. Um, what? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you got 16 attack. Yeah, you have Gorhal equipped on turn nine, let's say. Turn yeah. ten, you go Bran, Blood Cell Raider. Then you give it charge. It's now at 18 attack. Okay. And then you hit face for 25, or you faceless if you've played Emperor. Sounds like fun. <laughs> it's a did lot you of try fun. it on ladder? I did. It's kind of hilarious because you play Fatigue Warrior and you slap that in. Uh, but it's a lot of cards. You might as well play a Wargan combo, for the most part. It's just very funny. It's a lot more fun than it's good. Uh, the War Axe and the Death's Bite for Curse are actually amazing against uh, Secret Pally. You're looking to get that removal that's going to cost you very little, and that's exactly what he has. Um, yeah, it's pretty much flawless here. Yeah. I mean, uh, the he might be thinking about um, noble sacrifice. That's why goes... he's using the slam instead, because yeah. he doesn't like want that. to get additional damage. I kind of like that. It's very it's playing it safe, but you're guaranteed to not take uh, more than what you've already taken. And if you plan to equip your death bite on the coin on turn three, then yes, mm -hmm. that's even better. Because if it's redemption, then your second attack from death bite two turns from now will guarantee a kill on this. Uh, this juggler. I like that. No punish. So now he knows it was either revenge uh, or it was noble sack, competitive spirit, name it. So let's see how this will pan out. There's yeah, Alexstrasza already. There's no whirlwind. There's Death Spite two turns away. So the competitive spirit will make a huge difference here, but it doesn't go for it. it, it this is interesting, right? Because it feels like the secret keeper. With this is a very good spirit. Yes. Right. And the hero power will make a. But huge what if he whirlwinds here. you, right? Like, what if he whirlwinds you? Then you lose everything and you end up with nothing. Wouldn't he already do done that? He has the coin. You kill three masters, right? And you draw a card, and your opponent. Has just Trump's justice. Uh, it's justice. He's got Trump's justice. <laughs> He's got Trump's justice. Lights justice oh. here. Uh, just <laughs> Trump's <now>. justice. justice. <laughs> I'll never get over that one. I don't know how that came in your head, but that is actually beautiful. Uh, uh, I have no idea points. either. Uh, it's not, you know, it's late into the night. I, I, I had to be thinking about Trump enough. Oh, so like, <laughs> long enough. <laughs> no. Oh, when when the night comes, Lothar thinks about Trump. Confirmed. I'm liking this. Oh. All right. So, uh, you were saying, wouldn't he have already done the whirlwind? Yes, I think you're right. So ultimately, I feel like that secret keeper play was great. Uh, but there's always a chance that if this is a deck that runs maybe multiple whirlwinds. And you get punished. And what if there's a brawl on five? Then you haven't accomplished anything. You've only overextended. Okay, fair, po fair point, um, I would say. It's a matter of playing risk and reward, I guess. It's all about personal preference at this point, yeah. It's like some players like to play it a bit more uh, risky. 
and you can basically make your plays based on that. It's all about how risk averse you are. Pay off though, because these one ones, unless they get buffed somehow by kings, aren't gonna stick around. But it's gonna give Leon the ability to reset the board with a secret keeper and a pile of shredder if he wants. And with a competitive spirit in his hand, he's gonna be able to play that after the challengers played a bit later on. It's actually better, right, to have it in the hand in this situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. it's not better. You would always have, you would always like to have another card than this in your hand. So scratch that. Well, it's better to have it in your hand than have it um, on the board, I guess, from Challenger. If you expect only one minion to be buffed from it, that's about it. I'm no. getting a freeze on the image here. Yeah, I didn't hear it for quite a uh, long time. Yep. I. Yeah, image froze. Alright, sorry about that, I had technical issues again. Uh, I guess um, the Skype software doesn't really like us at this this hour. Yeah, we've been, we've been, I think we've been casting too long. Skype's like, come on guys, get off <laughs> of this. Yeah, come on. Get out of the, the, get out the band wide. We need some to, for someone else, the, those calls, yeah. you know. Alright, so play-wise what happened, the ghoul was popped, the Trisor champion was used to kill a Dread Corsair, I believe. Um, and then the... Yeah, that's pretty much all I see here. And based on this, triggering repentance. What could you do that with? You'd have to play the ghoul to trigger it, which is yep. alright. The question is, what do you do about this 6 6? That's what I'm wondering right now, because you know there's a noble sag that was dropped off by this guy. Redemption top deck, though, for Leon was actually pretty huge, um, because it actually means that. He's going to be able to replay it afterwards if he wants to. Uh, without having to worry about the other competitive, uh, the other challenger. But it also means that if he doesn't get to play it on a board that he likes, he's going to be super far behind because that's a dead draw. Yeah, so it's one or the other. There's no execute for Cursed and this is looking really awful for him right now. Hmm. I mean, you have the ability to, like, if you set up Deathbite now, you can set up a crazy Battle Rage, right? By playing two minions into Battle Rage afterwards. I'm not sure how much you'd like that, but... No, that I don't think I like it. Consider? The damage is just too high. Alright, well, he's gonna be happy though. Leon's gonna be happy here. I mean, the Curse's gonna be happy to see that there's no competitive spirit. Oh! Perfect oh, wow. for him! One of the few one health minions coming out of that. Mm -hmm. But still, 6 damage to the face makes a huge difference, and low tap is sealing, basically sealing any out, uh, any outs from spells, and that uh, also makes uh, it very annoying to use the coin. Executes was not in hand. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Why would we go for redemption and competitive spirit right now? You know, that's a really interesting question. I feel like redemption um, would basically work... I mean, you already have a redemption up, right? Like, I mean, the competitive spirit was the question, because redemption's already on board. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, that makes is, no sense. Like, how much oh, value do you no. get from competitive spirit? The most you'll get is, you know, a buff on three minions. If your 2-1 dies and it comes back to life and then it lives, and then you get a 3-2 and the Lothar becomes a 6, um, I mean, a 6-6, six, six, and then the... Challenger gets buffed up. So it's a very niche situation, but after Lothab, I feel like that's justifiable because there's very few cases where your board will be wiped. 
So there was probably a definite consideration from Leon, uh, but getting the 1-1 one -one is also understandable. It gives him another wave of secrets afterwards if he wants to replenish the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, other than that, it feels like there's so much damage going in. Oh my god. Uh, that is rough. We're looking at 11-12 damage. He's 5 off lethal. Uh, competitive Spirit into Divine Favor. I don't think can give him 5 unless he finds... Uh, I mean, even Kings doesn't do it. True Server doesn't do it. I don't think he's going to have lethal quite this turn. Double Abuse of Service doesn't those. do it. But yeah. the the cock Hammer is just insane. But he can coin Alex Straza himself. But it's still... Just remember that. The, the... I'm just saying, he can coin oh. Alex Straza. That's disappointing. I'm, I'm not saying it wins. I'm just saying you can coin Alex. This is the situation when I actually think that you should trade with the uh, Frothing Berserker. Because this you have. only time, right? Yes, because you still have lethal in the upcoming turn. And that Frothing Berserker might get out of hand if you leave it up. And there's the one case where it will. Literally the one case, because if it attacks, if, you know, there's an attack with Curse uh, from the Death's Bite, Noble Sack triggers, then he overrides the weapon, then he whirlwinds, the Frothing is now suddenly getting really, really, really big, right? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. probably a way for you to lose the game, if anything. So that's a very good call from Leon. Very good call, and he squeezed, he squeezed the damage coming from the weapon in the last millisecond. So, that was very important. And now, Curse has to make a decision. What do I do about those minions? Can I find... Like, he's trying to get Battle Rage value somehow, I think. He's looking for that. I'm not sure what he's digging for. So he enrages the Frothing. Hmm. Because now he can't use Alex Straza. That's it. That was his last push. He's going to override the weapon, trigger an AoE to buff the Frothing. And then Battle Rage. And hope that he finds what? Two executes. executes. Double executes. A lot of executes. Yeah. Double um, executes. They still, from won't deal with this. they still won't deal with the one one that just got buffed. And he is unable to. Uh, Does he even have time for this? We'll get what did he pick cards. up? Two cards. One of them is an acolyte. No help. No help from the patron either. That's I mean, there was no it. way of playing around it because he eventually land on the other one of the other two minions. Then he would have to get two executes, and it would be free damage to the face. So it, he would be free of lethal. Then okay, then maybe it was possible. He would have maybe it, lived, but it had to be yes. exactly two executes. Yes, exactly two executes, and the event la the, the the event had to land on one of the bigger minions and not the one one. So that was a huge thing because otherwise even the two executes weren't enough because it's still six damage on the board and you couldn't armor up. And um, that's uh, that's it for the two third one, game. I think. Two one for Lion right now, and Kyrus has to back uh, back up with his to get a backup from his uh, druid if I remember correctly. And it's gonna be a little rough yes, against Secret Valley, good. but it's not impossible, right? Let's be realistic here. We haven't really seen um, this exact deck being played, I think, by uh, by Cursed yet. So if he's playing an aggressive variant, which this is not, never mind, I lied. I was gonna say, if this is an aggressive variant, then he's got the ability to get on board uh, as fast, if not faster, than the Paladin in some cases. Yep. Well, Leon's got his mysterious challenger. If he wants to keep that thing, but he's looking for the children mini bots, the jugglers of this world. So, uh do you keep mysterious challenger when coming on coin? Yes. Yes, a hundred percent of the time I keep it every time. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That this is the this is the card that pushes the deck to the limits. Just insanely it, valuable. Right. It takes a fair deck and it makes it idiotic, right? Yep. Like Secret it's funny because Secret Paladin really got nothing else than that card. Well it's um, from it's a bigger, better Mad Scientist. So sure. Yeah, and Mad Scientist we all know is totally balanced, so Imagine if Mad Scientist would put a secret into the game. 
instead of uh, like you know um, sorry as a battle cry not as a death rattle as a battle cry yeah yeah I would probably play it in rogue just to shadow step it and then <laughs> it would be so broken that I probably would go ahead and do that why by the way by the way why rogue doesn't have any traps yet should have right? I'm actually I we I assumed they would get zero cost traps by the way um, a long time That's ago, broken. I thought they would get no, no. I thought they would get zero cost traps that actually had a, like a near null effect. Something like at the start of your turn, restore one health to your hero. Um, something ridiculously bad. It gives them the ability to play kind of a empty your hand immediately deck uh, while getting very little value out of it. But that not, like really imagine see. worse than repentance. So, but like, that that those zero mana cards that are spells will synergize with Miracle Rogue. They would make, yeah, you, you know what? They would make a deck exist that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Like, they would actually enable combos in a way that right now, Backstab is the only thing that does. Uh, it's kind of sad to say, but Backstab is right now the only enabler the rogues have. Um, it's really hard to, you know, swallow that pill when you love rogue. Because, and, and Blizzard is very cautious about putting zero cost spells. But I feel like zero cost traps that have almost no effect in a game where your deck size is 30, it's actually not that bad. Um, not anymore. Not when but I look at all the stuff that's being done. My uh, my opinion about zero mana cards is that you shouldn't have any cards like that. Sure. I, I just um, think that the zero mana right. cards I will be abused at some point. Well, however, they might be bad. At some point of the game, they will all be abused. So I want to say one thing, Lothar. I think Murloc Shaman is going to be top tier. Okay. Right? I just want to say that right now before it happens. I think Relic <laughs> Shaman is going to be tier, tier, well, tier 1.5, tier 1 to tier 2. Like, it's going to flood, maybe not tier 1, but tier 1.5, maybe. It's going to be there. Because um, that zero cost Murloc is a coin and it buffs everything by plus 2 plus 2 with that new spell. Mm -hmm. I think with the seven mana, pointing that yeah. spell out is ridiculous. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Yeah. It, it gets. Minus one for each Murloc, right? Uh, but so it affects Murloc, every single every single minion. minion anyway, so it doesn't have to be Murloc. So you could technically have the Tide Hunter for two mana, giving you a two one and a one one. That's basically giving you your mana back, and then you play a tiny fin, you coin it out, and then you get that card for like four mana. It's ridiculous sometimes, uh, just to think about. But it's a hope. It's not guaranteed. Right now, by the way, uh, game-wise, I feel like Leon's been taking a really aggressive hold of the early game. And this is a weird case where he didn't coin out the um, the challenger on turn 5. But I guess the idea is I want to get the removal out of the way, and I'm still very far ahead no matter what. Uh-oh. Swipe. Wait, Wrath on the 1 2. If it buffs the, the mini bot, you can try to BGH it down if Avenge hits. Okay. If you swipe that's fair. that, then you have to go for Swipe, Innervate, Swipe. If you, if you swipe the spider, you have to Innervate the swipe on the, the mini bot or kill it with BGH afterwards. So it's better just to use uh, Wrath, Beacon Hunter, right? It's a 50 50. It really depends. But yeah, I think. Oh, if the Avenge hits the one three, the the one two though. Wait, what about three. just Raffing Secret Keeper? Yeah, that that's the idea. But the thing is, if the spider, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, you have to swipe, uh, and then you can't innervate swipe. But it's still a very good play, assuming the uh, sticks to gets buffed. And it well, gets buffed. Perfect curve as well. You get the shade, innervate BGH. That's as good as you're ever going to get in a position like this one. And let's see what's happening right now. The Truce of a Champion will kill... Oh, that's an awful draw. So you kill the Truce of a Champion... With the Truce of a Champion, you kill the Big Game Hunter. Or you just go face. Oh! Face. With Consecration, I'd go face. Wow, he's got a full tree at this stage. Wait, what? Good. Oh, yeah, I mean, he hasn't. We haven't seen repentance. We haven't seen competitive spirit. So these two are still up. And now the only thing that Curse has is swipes, but he can only play one. That doesn't address the problem. Not even close. You yeah, could play Force of Nature really badly now. 
We've seen force of nature being used in situations like these to great effect. I mean, if you force of nature and you live, you still have the double swipe on turn 8. That might be the out you're looking for. Hmm. I think he's gonna have to go for force. Oh, goodness. If you go- Could you attack with a shade? You can't swipe. Yeah, you have to go for force, right? Force has to land. The event has to land on the secret keeper. Savage War swipe or Savage War keeper. So you attack here if the Savage War hits. I mean, the the, the event hits um, the spider. You can keeper the grove it. But then competitive spirit. Two, seven. Yeah, you're pretty much on swipe or nothing. Then By the way, those to... animations they have to be faster. They have to be fixed. I think. Uh, Blizzard's probably gonna tackle that at some point. But this is the best you're gonna get. The Savage War clear kills everything. The only thing you're dealing with is Spider afterwards. So this is the perfect outcome for Cursed. Mm -hmm. Everything that happened here is exactly what he was looking for. And now he's still alive. Oh! <laughs> oh god, that hurts to look at. But most of the secrets are gone. Yeah, but it doesn't right? matter. That's a 6-6 six, six minion. But you can deal with that. Well, okay, maybe not. You can heal with the Ancient of Lore? Um, okay. You, you have to? You have to? Or do you not? Otherwise, it's Keeper of the Grove, that spider, and then swipe. Uh, swipe it. I feel like Ancient of Lore is still your best bet. As bad as it looks. Actually, Force of Nature. No, Keeper of the Grove. Oh, that's six six man. It's such a problem. Because if you go for the if you go for the keeper swipe, then you're dead to extra two damage if that's competitive spirit uh, from the the challenger. Yep, that's true. Uh, I, from from the droid's perspective, every a minion that has more than three HP is a problem. Because <laughs> he's gonna have to go for the the, the kill in the six six. He's doing it. It's actually going to work because he's seen the redemptions already, right? So he knows this is not going to get redeemed. He knows what's left is a noble sack. He actually kept track of all the secrets. But now he is out of swipes. But he's 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 in the game, though. That's the most important thing. Oh, Leon goes aggressively. That. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be the play, right? He's not losing the damage of that. That, that Ancient of Lore heal, this is actually way too close of a game. Think about this, right? If Cursed, Hero Powers, triggers Noble Sack, and heals himself... Oh my god. This Druid of the Claw... is his saving grace, I think. Would you go Ancient of Lore heal, Hero Power? And just yes. pass? Yes, I would have gone... Ancient of Law, Hero Power, Pass. And then if he doesn't kill the Ancient of Lore, you have Lethal with a combo. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And if he does kill it, then you're okay because you've got Judo the Claw on the back end. What a close game for Curse here. I, I think it's correct to go for the Ancient of Lore because... Wait, actually it's not. Because Druid of the Claw takes 6 damage. Yeah, but the lore sets up lethal, doesn't it? Oh, I guess uh, the druid does that, as well. Yeah, the druid oh, yeah. of the does it well. Does it uh, as well? So I think druid of the is actually better because it clears the minions. But he goes for the, the thing. Heal. Is it, it's, it's more it's more on curve to play the the ancient lore because you get to weave in the extra hero power. If you find the druid of the claw number two, you might be able to get yourself an extra line of taunt. Uh, maybe you can play it in conjunction with something else, whereas the Ancient of Lore is literally your one turn on its own. And that's another power drop for Leon! This Jesus never stops, Christ. it's relentless! A Tyrion in this situation is is just a... I don't know, man. It, it's perfect. It's... That, there was no other card draw that could have been better. Yeah, especially if Leon... Leon now feels confident that he can trade, right? He's like, yeah, I can make the trades here because... Even if I do end up, uh, you know, losing somehow, you know, losing this board, Tyrion should be enough to get me back in the game. He's seen the two swipes, there's no more of those left, so the one ones are safe no matter what happens, and he's gonna be happy to coin more of those little guys out. Um, 
And Curse is looking for... He I mean, he can keepers, use the right? combo. Yeah, he used two keepers, I think. He can use the combo to clear. But I then think. there's a weapon. Uh -oh. That that can't possibly do anything. That can't possibly do anything. Consecration. Is that lethal? Wait, One, two, three, four. Wait, what, what was the draw? Second Druid of the Claw? Yeah, it was second Druid of the Claw. Okay. So that's giving him one more turn. Guys, I like I just want to say right now, there's a possibility that somehow um Curse gets his combo off if Lion decides to get a bit greedy. If Lion gets greedy, it's gonna backfire very harshly. I don't think Lion will put his tournament life on the line like this. He's gonna make the trades. He has to make the trades. Yep. They're too juicy. And he still has the upper hand. That is so nice for him. Wow. I like this play here. Yep. Yeah. Like right, now Curse has. Uh, I can't imagine there's an out in that deck that actually saves him from this. I can't think of a way to salvage this game. It looks Doomsayer. All desperate. How do you pop it? You have to find the Wrath right now. And what was the draw? We didn't see it. There's a bug. It. Yeah, it's about. Uh, Oh, it's glitched. Well, that that brings uh, another factor to the game. Now we know, don't know what's happening. Oh, come on. That's not right. Oh, come on. No way. Lizard, fix your spectating. Oh man, I feel like Leon's got the game, but for some reason right now it looks like uh, Curse oh, wait, is thinking. So either oh, wait, he's wait, got wait, wait, wait. He's actually he's, pl he's playing. Okay. So I see. So Force we didn't see the card. Seven draw. I th he's going for the Hail Mary on the Shredder, I think. So he attacks, triggers Noble Sack, double trades the uh, four, the four fours, the four twos that is. But then popping the Shredder still leaves him with four health, where he dies to the weapon. Mhm. Mm so there's still no way for him to get this done, no matter what. Yes, even Doomsayer doesn't have to do And does a duck pedal. So, Leon takes the tournament and wins the trip to the UK to Birmingham for Insomnia Trucible Championships for, for like to participate in the $30,000 tournament with eight invited pro players from all over the world and uh, eight qualified players. And actually, Leon is the first one. We don't know right, who's... he's the first one to get yes. there. We've got another UK online only qualifier that's going to be happening. Uh, I think tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, I will not be a part of it as far as I know. I haven't been asked to cast. Um, but basically, the guys from Game are sponsoring this entire pay. Like, they're paying through the like everything for the accommodation. You can check them out at game.co.uk. So thanks to them for paying with this. Very appreciated. Uh, Leon is getting a chance at a pro you know, a match, I guess a match on the pro scene uh, and maybe making a splash because he's, I feel like he's been playing pretty solid. Yeah, his decks are good really and well. his thinking uh, is also pretty on point. So I want to see whether or not he can compete with some of the big boys that are going to be there. Definitely true. I mean, uh, he was playing really well and um, really, I'm really glad that someone like him is winning the, the tournament disqualifiers because it brings a legitimacy to, the, um, to this guy and all. Uh, I'm so happy that I did cast this because you know when we'll be uh, when we will be uh, casting the main event, we can actually say something about him, right? So yeah, that's a for sure. Point. And uh, it's nice to know the people who are going to be involved uh, for the UK online qualifier. I was corrected; it hasn't been announced yet. The dates haven't been announced. It will likely happen early December. So keep your eyes peeled if you're looking to participate in the UK one. Just make sure that you keep uh, yourself up to date with the event. There's going to be announcements for that, so you can just uh, check those out as well. Again, thanks for the thanks to everyone for watching. This was a really great first day of the event. This is uh, kind of our first foray into the qualifiers. We'll get a lot more coming up and the event will happen mid-December. Lothar, you will be there with me. Uh, yes, we will. Probably with Nimsh as far as I uh, as far as far I remember, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. Um, you, me, Nimsh and Raven and we'll be casting this tournament from what I know. And this will be from December 12th to December 13th, the weekend of 
the second weekend of December, basically. So, yeah, uh, we'll get we'll just wrap it up. And thank you for watching. That was like a really intense Omen qualifier. I'm really happy to, that we did today. That uh, did it today, and um, we'll see each other next time, right? What do you have to yep. say, Nox? Pretty much it. You guys have a nice one. Thanks for watching and uh, keep the hype up. League of Explorers is just coming out. Yeah. See you guys.